Blessings, everybody. In this video, I want to begin a perhaps series-long <laughs> discussion. Not really countable at this point in time, but I want to open a discussion on the third eye. I wanted to make sure that I could do this topic a service. All right, so this video is definitely going to be for the person who is just getting into the idea of the third eye, the idea of chakras, the idea of, you know, energy and spiritual practice, as well as for those who have been scouring the internet and authorships to get more information about this topic. And I'm gonna make it without making it, you know, culty, the, the culty way. So you don't have to worry about that. This is Scarlet Moon. This is just open, plain, shoot from the hip. Let's talk about the third eye, all right? Now, the third eye as an energy is something that I think that we do need to sort of disambiguate for a minute because when a person goes and talks about the third eye, there's an understanding and that leads to, you know, an approach. And in this case, there are three primary understandings that are related. They are related. And three different approaches that come with those understandings. Spiritual, physiological, and then there is sort of, I guess you could say, the secular developmental. I want to talk about all of these things and give them the time that they deserve. But in this particular video, I'm definitely focusing on the third eye as what it is, what it does, what it's for, how it fits into our energy body, and what we can actually do with it, and some tips and ideas and tricks that have worked for myself and other practitioners of my ilk that has helped them to open their third eye as well. So let us just dive right in. Let's talk about the third eye for a minute. What is it for? A lot of people will know that the third eye is basically the sixth chakra. Now the chakra itself is an energy center, almost like an organ or a, maybe even a system in our physical body. Now the chakras themselves are primary energy systems, primary energy organs in our spirit, in our soul, in our auric field as it exists in this particular incarnation or embodiment of the self. Now we have way more than just the seven, but it is one of the, the primary in-body sevens, okay? And what this governs is our ability to have, I guess you could say, the second sight, all right? And that is a huge topic. That is a huge topic. What is the second sight? What does that mean? Yes, for those of you who have been studying this for the purpose of gaining more understanding of, say, the psychic arts, the ability to perceive that which might be on a different frequency or different, I guess you could say, plane of perception or plane of existence, the third eye is definitely essential and paramount to have open and workable to be able to perceive those things, everything from seeing energy to seeing perhaps even a spiritual presence, the boundaries of a spiritual energy body, such as the aura. The third eye is absolutely the key to seeing and perceiving those things. Now, I do want to mention that in the beginning, that will be perceived in the mind's eye. Now, funny enough, the third eye is the mind's eye. And what we need to pay attention to is that we might not see things with the naked eye right away, okay? Some people do, some people don't. So it's very important to understand that if you're not seeing blobs of energy flying around after doing a third eye meditation, the last thing you want to do is let yourself get discouraged or raise your expectation in this experience. The third eye also is about our other receptive psychic or intuitive abilities. It's all about that because in the body system, the third eye does not only rule, I guess what you might consider the, the visual areas, but it also rules the audio sensory organs, the ears, as well as all of the, the information receivers in our body. Okay, this includes your sense of smell, 
What might be natural to you might not necessarily be a visual experience, contrary to the fact that it's considered the third eye. And this can change a lot of things. What if you find that you have a proclivity towards clear audience, all right, which is the ability to hear and perceive through, I guess you could say, an enhanced sense of hearing, or perhaps even clear aliens, all right, the ability to perceive through, uh, you know, a smell. You, maybe you've heard of mediums or shamans who can actually perceive maybe a spiritual change or a spiritual presence based on a certain scent in the air. This is also ruled by the third eye. One of the issues that I think has come up modern, you know, in modern times in the age of information is that the ego wants to create a standard. All right, it wants to streamline things with the best of intentions most of the time, but it can miss the point entirely. We don't necessarily know all of what our, you know, our natural gifts are. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on, but I want to cover the other areas. And the other area of the third eye has to do with what a lot of people are starting to call conscious awareness, the ability to understand, you know, to acquire knowledge. Yes, of course, that would be done through the psychic and spiritual faculties, but in the sense that this is more about conscious awareness of all things. And this is kind of getting more into the secular developmental understanding of it, where a person is able to sort of understand that everything is consciousness, that everything is interrelated in the, the, the bigger picture of it all. We are all but pieces of a bigger energetic puzzle, you know, that is this reality. And understanding, you know, the way to perceive perhaps the nature of things. All right, so this is getting into more of an enhanced capacity for intuition in a general sense, the acquisition of knowledge without necessarily having to go through that experience. You might be acquiring that knowledge through, you know, through hearsay. You might be actually learning how to understand and comprehend knowledge um, that comes to you from behind a person's words, you know, learning to actually perceive what's between the lines, perhaps even actually perceive the experience being conveyed to you in that conversation or in that exchange. Now, whether you develop and understand this awareness, this sense of intuition, this ability to acquire knowledge, or you discover these natural, spiritual, you know, I guess you could say paranormal or, or psychic abilities is something that must be nurtured over time. You know, if we hunt down the idea of a third eye to have some kind of mind-blowing um, psychedelic experience, we are operating from an egoic mindset, a trap of salvation consciousness. Um, I'm going to open my third eye and suddenly everything's fine. I'm going to open my third eye and suddenly I'm, you know, I'm going to be able to, to do all these fantastic and crazy things. I'm going to be able to, you know, see spirits and I'm going to be able to, you know, have x-ray vision and see the truth in all things. And it's kind of like the idea that enlightenment is the end goal. You know, no, enlightenment is kind of just, you know, a goal post that you pass on your journey. This third eye is very similar. And so when we actually open and activate the third eye, when we're working with our third eye, we're actually learning to cultivate and draw in more energy into ourselves that is actually meant to be there in the first place. Okay. And one of the things about the third eye that's really important to understand is that it's never meant to be a trip. You know, you're learning how to perceive and understand things that are going on whether you see them or not. When people have a hard time, however, either coping with what they're perceiving or perhaps actually coping with not getting to that point of having an open and available third eye, a lot of that has to do with an imbalance in the other chakras. One of the things that we've got to understand is that in order to get all the chakras working properly, we must actually be focusing our energy and on healing these areas and bringing them to optimal strength, optimal vibration, in order for everything to be working as a whole. No good trying to open the third eye if we are you know, completely shut down in the heart, 
blocked in the solar plexus, maybe our root chakra is on overdrive, that is not a balanced energy center, okay? That, that is not a balanced energy body. And that can actually lead to a lot of trouble down the way. We need to be able to get a lot of those things under control, take some time, you know, healing those areas, anything that could be causing physical imbalances within the body, um, emotional or behavioral imbalances in the body. These things are all very important. When it comes to the third eye itself, again, once it opens, it's not going to be this huge explosive experience. You are gaining access to that experience. That makes sense you are gaining access to that experience yes there will be that initial oh my god kind of moment where there's this open understanding this information is flooding in however it floods in but the important thing to understand is beyond information beyond knowledge there must be comprehension and comprehension comes from a different area of the body comprehension actually comes from the crown so again, if we are only focused on one area of our body, if we're focused only on one energy center in our spiritual body, then we are doing ourselves a disservice. The third eye may bring attention to us that may scare or frighten us because it may draw um, attention to certain other imbalances that are going on in our lives. You know, fears, uh, traumas, anxieties, maybe insecurities, it can do that as well. And it's bringing that up, it's bringing that experience up to be processed and healed. You know, it's one of those situations where we understand that when we are truly healed, we can move on from that situation. And, if only, and even if we had to reference that situation, we are not letting ourselves or our energies be hijacked by that. And it's very important to have that down as best you can, you know, before you open your third eye or just power through it, whatever you want to do. I'm not going to preach to you. One of the things that we have to understand about the third eye is that in order to actually get it to work better when we open it is to understand that it actually opens and closes all the time. People don't wander around with all of their chakras shut off at once, okay? And people don't walk around with their third eyes shut all at once. You know, children absolutely have more open and more active and more nurtured third eyes. There are adults in the world who never actually were denied that experience, and so they have it as well. Sometimes it may go frail and unnurtured, so this third eye experience may only make itself available to somebody in clarity, you know, sparsely through different points in time which means that we need to exercise it, we need to work with it, all right? And that means paying attention to how are we actually harnessing our energies and bringing them into balance. Meditation is absolutely ideal, and meditation is probably not something that is new as an idea, you know, or a suggestion in this practice. Becoming more aware and sensitive to energy, being able to actually put yourself in a situation where you can feel energy shifts, where you can acknowledge energy shifts. And that actually is not a part of the third eye. To be sensitive to energy can come from any different chakra. So you don't have to wait to have this fully 100% operational third eye for that to happen. Divination. Working on your intuition, your ability to perceive and to look into circumstances to receive information by jogging your intuition. That is what tools such as the I Ching and the runes and the tarot are for. Those kinds of things really do actually help a person open their third eye. Practicing receptivity. The reason people want and suggest meditation is because when the mind is a blank, when the mind is open to receiving information, that is when the images come forth. That is when the audios come forth. That is when the, the, the ability to perceive perhaps even entire scenes comes forth. But you can train yourself into that again with maybe even various divination practices. Mindfulness, learning how to throw your focus is very important because that can help you develop presence of mind. Now, presence of mind is extremely important because it is so easy for us to become distracted even when we're working on trying to get our third eye in. Who hasn't had a meditation or, 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 or gone into an exercise working on, you know, a, a, a certain situation, condition, or maybe even the third eye, 
and found themselves, you know, getting very distracted by the fact that they couldn't do it. Getting distracted by perhaps recollections about what was going on during the day, where they fell back into ego and got more into the loop, you know, the loop of the mind, the inability to watch our thoughts. All of a sudden the thoughts have hijacked everything, we're having emotional reactions, we've been ripped out of the experience. That is something that mindfulness, as well as divination, can actually help you to understand. Again, meditation opens you for the receptivity, and then the presence of mind that comes from the latter two practices can also help you to stay in that receptive state. When it comes to the idea of, you know, maybe the physiological, okay, there is a school of thought that does assert that the third eye is one that rules a gland, the pineal gland, all right? and each of our chakras rules a particular gland. Okay, so if the third eye rules the, the pineal gland, then the, um, the thymus is ruled by the heart, the adrenals are ruled by the root, and so on and so forth. Approaching the third eye from a physiological point of view, I've kind of found is sort of backwards, you know, in a world where we understand that energy and mind over matter, energy over matter, Sometimes it can make us more available to focus on working with the pineal gland as a physiological tool, but it must be worked on in tandem with the other thing, okay, with the actual spiritual practice or the actual meditative practice. Well, actually, meditation is a spiritual practice. Of course, maintain vigilance in maybe making sure that you are detoxifying your pineal gland and also focusing, again, on helping to retrain your brain. All right, so yes, cutting out fluoride, excellent. Making sure that we are staying away from processed foods, things that are highly toxic, things that have too much refined sugars, those are obviously very, very helpful. If you do eat meat, it's advised that you make that part of your diet more of something pescatarian, something that is high in omega-3s and brain-nurturing oils. Fish, shellfish, those are excellent. But what you wanna understand is that these things are going to help make that gland more receptive, but our brains do need to go through a bit of a shift themselves. All right, and this has to do with understanding the physiological changes that need to happen. And luckily, thank you to science, neuroplasticity, epigenetics, we can understand that neuropathways in the brain, how our brain secretes certain hormones, we can change that. Our brains are, you know, very much uniquely wired to our experience. That's how we adapt. So paying attention to what's going on in the brain is important. If you're easily given to a different kind of choice hormone, you will notice that different parts of the brain center are actually active way more so than others. And so being able to bring ourselves back down, not only into the body, but into a state of receptivity does require under, you know, taking responsibility for that. You know, everyone has, I think, sometimes their own choice chemicals. You know, I, I'm very much uh, somebody who enjoys his adrenaline, so that is something I have to be mindful of. Another person, you know, may have an issue where they have a lot of cortisol in their, you know, in, in their regular hormonal output, which can lead to depression. Practices like mindfulness and meditation do also help to rewire and control the brain with conscious committed discipline over time, all right? It's important to understand that the third eye itself is absolutely an important energy center, but it's not the only one, okay? Always focus on making sure that everything in your body, everything in your energy field is working in harmony and in balance with one another. Yes, the third eye will come with its advantages, but those are merely byproducts of finally reaching a state of spiritual health. Don't forget the others and make sure that you have fun and this is a pleasurable experience for you. All right, so this has been my introductory video on the third eye. I will come back with another video on tips and tricks and more techniques, how we can open the third eye and what we could be working on through that there. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And share it with anyone that you think might find this helpful or would just like to jot down a few extra ideas for this process. I'll talk to you later.